Hello, my name's Stuart. I'm the curator of the Cromwell Museum in Huntingdon. It's a great pleasure to be with you again after a few weeks break, um, doing another one of our Cromwellian Conversations videos. Today I'm going to focus in on a little book called Pedantius, which is in CI the Museum's collections and on display inside the Cromwell Museum. It's a little book which is a kind of play lampooning various characters associated with the Cambridge College in the early 17th century. And the Pedantius character here appears to be a schoolmaster. It's generally thought this particular character is based on that of Thomas Beard, who was the schoolmaster here at Huntington Grammar School, the building which is today the Cromwell Museum, in the early 1600s. Now I'm recording this video at the beginning of September in 2021, as many of the schools back across the UK are now going back for the first time after the summer holidays, and indeed uh, many still sort of getting over the period where they've been closed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I thought it just interesting to talk a little bit about this particular object and Cromwell's schoolmaster as the 21st century schools are going back at the moment. And Cromwell, we know, was a student at Huntingdon Grammar School in the building which is today the Cromwell Museum, between 1610 and 1616. At that point, the building had been a grammar school for about 50 years. The building, of course, is much older, dates to the 12th century, but after the Reformation and Henry VIII closing down the religious house, which was originally contained within it, much of the building was demolished, and then from 1565, it became the Huntingdon Free School. So there's about 20 or 25 boys, middle-class families, um, who are entitled to an education because their father is a freeman, they will basically get an education which will enable them to go on to Oxford or Cambridge University. That's very much what the classroom education at this time was focused on in many of these grammar schools. Thomas Beard was the schoolmaster here between 1605 and 1625. He was probably born somewhere in the late 1560s or early 1570s. We don't know his exact background, but we thought he came from Huntingdon originally, and we know that he attended from university from 1584 onwards. In the 1590s, he was ordained as a priest, and he worked in the local area, at Kim Bolton, amongst other places, and also as the parishioner of All Saints Church and St John's Church, two different parishes here in Huntingdon. Between 1605 and 1625, as I say, he was the schoolmaster of the town's grammar school, as well as also being the local vicar. These were not incompatible trades. Even back in the Middle Ages, many educational facilities had been operated by the monks of local monasteries. Beard doesn't seem to have been that enthusiastic about teaching. In 1614, he said he was tired with his painful occupation of teaching and would gladly now be set free. That may be a, uh, a thought that many teachers might accord with even today. The lessons that he taught inside the classroom of the Huntingdon Grammar School were fairly standard for this period. We know that the boys attended the school five days a week from seven in the morning till five o'clock at the end of the day, usually with around two hours for lunch. There would have been some teaching of mathematics, a little bit of history perhaps, obviously some religious instruction, but primarily the majority of lessons were focused around the learning of Latin. Reason being that Latin was considered to be the educated language of the age. Many academic texts were published in Latin. A century before, of course, the Bible had been in Latin, although now, of course, it was, and thanks to the Reformation, made available in English. Um, and the idea was to teach you in such a way that you could think, read and write in Latin, not least because many lessons at university would have been conducted in that language. This was done show principally by the students reading texts and the Julius Caesar, many of the classical texts and classical writers from ancient Rome. They would then have to translate these from Latin into English and then from English back into Latin. The idea being that you tried to get the translation as close to the original as was possible and that way you got a firm grasp of grammar. How good Oliver Cromwell was at these lessons is unknown. We know very little about his childhood, of course, other than the fact he was educated at the grammar school. And certainly he was sufficient enough for him to then go on to Sydney Sussex College in Cambridge in 1616. He just seemed to have kept a little bit of Latin as he seems to have been able to converse with foreign diplomats in the 1650s whilst Lord Protector using that language. So perhaps some of his lessons did stay with him. How much of an influence Thomas Beard was as a schoolmaster on the young Oliver Cromwell is open to question. 
It used to be thought that Beard was a Puritan and therefore perhaps influenced Cromwell in his religious beliefs. That's now generally not thought to be the case, not least because there's no evidence that Beard had any Puritan beliefs, nor indeed that Cromwell was especially religious in his early life. In fact, generally, it's thought to be, even by his own admission, the opposite. Thomas Beard was indeed a kind of fire and brimstone preacher, but no more or less so than many Anglicans of his time. He preached against Catholicism and indeed wrote a book called The Theatre of God's Judgments. In this, he decries uh, various people who he sees as sinners against the Protestant faith, those who are Catholics, those who commit various crimes, even those like Christopher Marlowe, who might be shock horror atheists and the various punishments that might be visited upon them whilst they're in hell. So this might be seen to be, you know, quite radical by modern terms, but actually it's fairly standard stuff for the early 17th century. What happened to him later in life? Well, um, we know he retired from teaching in 1625. He was involved with disputes over a, a kind of new charter for the town, which also involved the young Oliver Cromwell as well in the late 1620s. He was kind of almost pensioned off, really, by sort of the late, by about 1630, and he died in Huntingdon in 1632 and is buried in the parish church. The grammar school continued to run inside the building, well, in fact, it's grammar school property, really, until the 1950s, when it became the Cromwell Museum. So it's had a long history of education with the town, and, of course, continues to do so in a slightly different format, even today. Hope you found that interesting. For any students who are out there studying this period at the moment at school, I hope wish you the best of luck with your studies. For any teachers who are out there, do bear in mind that the Cromwell Operative Museum offers various educational opportunities. We do school visits to the museum, not just physically, but also now virtually online using uh, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So you can have an education session with us right through the comfort of your own classroom. I hope you found that interesting. Please do remember to like and subscribe to this video. Um, like and subscribe our YouTube channel and do follow us also on our other social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and now, of course, also Instagram as well. Otherwise, please stay safe and well, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.